Howdy y'all, Fast Force 289, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be working on my 1977 Ford F-150, and we're gonna be changing out the pitman arm. On This is a four-wheel drive. On the four-wheel drives, the pitman arm has the ball joint socket built into the pitman arm instead of the drag link, like the two-wheel drive. So we gotta change the actual pitman arm to achieve, uh, uh, to get that slop, sloppiness out. Uh, I'll show you how sloppy it is when we get underneath the truck. But let's take a look at the new parts we got and see where we're going. Okay, so this is the new pitman arm I picked up from LMC Truck. You can see here, pick, Ford pickup, 76 to 77. The pitman arms changed in 78. They went to a different style of uh, steering linkages. Anyway, this is what you're going to need. And it is greasable, so that's good. So we're going to open this up and take a look at it. So this is what we got in the kit. We got a new Carter key, grease fitting, pitman arm, nut. Uh, so yeah, and this right here is nice and tight. We can take that sloppiness out. All we gotta do is remove the old one and put this one in. Also be mindful that this is two and three quarters across here. Okay, so make sure you got a pitman arm puller big enough because otherwise you ain't gonna be able to remove it. They're a press fit. The one I have was too small because this is the first four-wheel drive I've ever, I've ever done, so I ain't never needed one before. But I had to go to O'Reilly's get one. They didn't even have one. They had to order one and I picked the one, they ordered a bunch for me and I picked out which one would fit and then just bought it. But be mindful of that when you're installing it. Real quick, this is the pitman arm puller I got. And it's kind of funny because it says it's for Ford and it says for 2005 and later, Ford F250, 350. But this is the one that fits this, uh, this F-150 4x4 pitman arm. So this is what it looks like. And it just goes in here, slip it over like that. And see, it goes right on there like that. Perfect. And it'll pull it right on off. So we're gonna jump into it and get that old one removed so we can get this on. First thing we wanna do is remove this. We can knock this loose. You may have to get a pair of pliers to bend that. See real quick just how loose it is right now. Okay, so as you can see, we're not supposed to have that kind of looseness in this. It's really loose and worn out, creating a slop in the steering. So we're going to replace this whole thing, and then we should be good to go. This nut here is a 7 8 Let's use our wrench. And pop it loose. These, ain't usually, these usually ain't very tight. And now we're going to take a pickle fork. Is what they call it. And we're gonna stick it in here between the joint and hammer this off until it pops loose. Once that's out of the way, you can kind of move this out of your way. It'll move a little bit. Now we're gonna take our impact. You need a one and five sixteen socket to fit this. You can remove this with a breaker bar, but I'm gonna use my impact because it's easier. All right, take the nut off, then the lock washer. Now we can put our pitman arm puller up here. And then you just wanna take a wrench and tighten it down. All right, now once you, uh, you, I didn't show it on camera, but I ended up using my impact. I usually I don't like using impacts on pullers, but in this case, it was so tight. It's been stuck on there for so long. I just went in and used my impact and zipped it on off. And it worked great. Now that we got it off, uh, and also be mindful, this ended up turning. You want to make sure you put the pitman arm the right way. It can't go, but so many ways. If you look on, if you look in here, you'll see how it has like these flat spots in here, and it can't go on here, but but so many ways because you look, there's a flat spot right here. So it'll go like, you know, like this or like way over here. But it's not like it has to. It's not like it's individual teeth. It'll only go on four different ways, but You'll know, trust me, you'll know when you see it. Now we got that off, I'm gonna take a wire brush and just clean these threads up and these grooves a little bit. Make that new one go on easier. Make sure you put this on right. It goes on like this, not like that. Flip it right on here. And bam, just like that. And that's the way it goes. Put your lock washer and your nut back on. And 
should be about right. When it stops pulling, because it's a press fit, it's a wedge fit on here. So you just want it good and tight. And it'll go on up there and like, you'll know when it stops. Cause I mean, like you, if you watch here, you see the socket ain't really turning that much anymore. So it's good and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. Make sure your boots pushed up good. And now we can take, put our arm back up. Put our nut on and tighten it down. Just want to tighten it. You ain't got to kill it again. This is a wedge fit for these. So you want it snug. Don't leave it loose because then that could be catastrophic. Just, you know, tighten it up good. Put some good tension on it. And line your hole up for your carter pin. And then you'll be good to go. Take our new carter key and slide in the hole. Bend it around. Just like so. Now all I gotta do is fill it full of grease. And yeah, that's a done deal. Grease gun here. And you wanna pop it on that fitting. Just like so. And when you're pumping this full of grease, you're gonna watch this boot. And whenever you see this boot start to expand, you don't wanna overfill it and have grease shooting out of it. Cause then that means you, you more likely may have tore the boot and then you're just defeating the purpose. Now you can get dirty. You wanna watch it and when it starts to expand, you know it's full. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but you see right there, it came out the side and that's because I couldn't see it expand. Sometimes you can't see them expand. Once you got it coming out like that, it's fine. Stop. It didn't tear the boot. It just kind of came up out of the, the upper part of the seal there, but we're good to go. Once you see grease come out, you know it's full. And then once you drive this a little bit, you want to come back and check it one more time. You maybe give it a, a pump or two, whatever it takes. Cause once you, when you're driving, it'll work the grease in more. All right, now I'm gonna show you how tight it is now. All right, guys, so that's it, we got it done. It, uh, it does drive better. The steering's a little bit tighter now, a little bit more responsive. Um, I did notice the drag link's got, not drag link, excuse me, the rag joint has some uh, wear on it. So I'm gonna get one of those and put in it and then that should be it. Cause the tire rods are tight, the ball joints are tight. It was that Pittman arm that was loose. The tracker bar bushings, I already replaced those. I didn't do a video on it. Uh, I kind of forgot I was in the middle of other stuff, but they're real easy. If you ever done like a uh, pan hard bar, but it's pretty, basically a pan hard bar is all it is. So if you ever done bushings on that, it's the same thing. Uh, they just you press them in with your hand. They're real simple and real easy. Um, and also the rag joint's got some wear in it. But other than that, it's good. So I'm going to change the rag joint in a future video and then... Uh, that should be it. Truck drives good. It drives real good. It drives better now. So that's it. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd always appreciate that. And as always, thank y'all for watching. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.